My name is Tori, this is No Life, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm here to start a brand new reading vlog I'm actually so freaking excited for. So I actually just filmed a historical romance episode for the podcast that I have with Jess at Peace Love Books. Our podcast is called The Bookish Life of Jess and Tori. And in one of our previous episodes we asked like if you had any topics you wanted us to talk about and someone commented that they wanted us to talk about historicals, historic romances, and everything like that. And in that episode, which I'll have linked in the description box below, you can go check it out if you would like, we talked in that episode about how we want to like single-handedly bring back good historical romances again. And so uh, that got me wanting to start this vlog a little bit early. So this vlog is a collab with a ton of other booktubers. I will have everyone who's participating tagged in the description box below so you can go check out all of their vlogs. But this is the first time where I'm going to be reading historicals in over a year. I tried one historical in 2023. One historical romance in 2023. And it was average. It was okay. It was Stacey Reed. Um, and I thought, oh, I was going to love this. And it was just okay. So my plan for this vlog to get me back into historical romances is to start with a beloved reread. So I'm starting with Devil in Winter by Lisa Kleypas. I actually have the audio. After our podcast episode, I had to go downstairs and like do some house stuff. So I started it on 20 minutes in and I love this one. I listened to the audio the first time I read it. I love the audiobook narrator. Her name is Mary Jane Wells. She's done a lot of historical romances and I love her narration. Sebastian St. Vincent is one of my all-time favorite historical romance men, heroes, whatever you want to call it. And Evie in this book is also one of my favorite heroines. So this is just like a reread that's going to get me back into the mood, get me back into loving historicals. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited to read this book. I love it. I was already, I'm literally only 20 minutes into the audiobook and I was already giddy over the characters. So this one I have high hopes for. Now, my TBR can change at any moment because what I've been doing for 2024 is if I'm not feeling a book, I'm DNFing it. If I get a chapter in, I'm not loving it. But I definitely want to try and read The Notorious Lord Nightly by Lorraine Heath. This is the second book in her Chessman series, Masters of Seduction. I picked the second book. I do have the first book, but the first book has like a 3.84 star rating on Goodreads with like 1500 ratings. And this book, the second book, has a 4 point something rating, like a little bit over four with more ratings. I think it has almost 2000 ratings. So I wanted to read this one because it seemed like people were liking this more. And I do know sometimes with Lorraine Heath, her first in a series can go okay for me. I've read a lot of her backlist previously. So I'm very excited to read this one. But apparently there's someone who's like writing, who's an anonymous author or something like that. And everyone thinks it's Lord K or Earl of Knightley. So I'm very excited. I love Lorraine Heath's writing now. I do have a very, very, very old historical, which is The Gift by Julie Garwood. This is a pirate romance. I have this on ebook um, just because I don't, this is like the original copy from like the 70s. Just because this is the original copy from the 90s, like you could tell by the side, it's painted this way. It's not like old like that. Like the pages are not actually that yellow, but that's how you can tell. Plus it's embossed or whatever. So I was like, oh, let's just try a really old one. This is Historical Hellions pick for January. Their live show is not until the end of the month. Uh, but I do have like a Joanna Lindsay I might read. I have so many historicals, like the last two shelves right here. We can't see one, but right here and right here are just all historicals. Some I've read, some I haven't. So this is one that's like an old one that I might pick up. I don't know. But for sure, but for sure, I'm reading Devil in Winter. I'm rereading this. I might pick up another Kerrigan Burn because The Hunter is one of my favorites. The Hunter is another one of my favorite historicals. So we'll see where this vlog takes us. It's like falling back in love with historical romances. That's what I want to do. That's the whole point of this vlog. That's the whole point of this collab. So once again, make sure you check out everyone. I'll have them tagged in the description box below. But... I'm gonna get moving on Devil in Winter. I'm very excited for this because it's one of my favorites.
Hello, it is Sunday. It's a relaxing Sunday. The hair is up, it's greasy, natural makeup. I just went on a walk with the boy. Hi puppy. We're both very tired, but, but I wanted to give an update on my first historical of the year, Devil in Winter. So this was a reread for me. I finished it right before I went on a walk and I was like, you know what, before I sit down to film this update, I wanna go on a walk. But I did finish this book. I love Sebastian St. Vincent so freaking much. Like, I wish I could put into words how complex of a character he is and how Lisa Kleypas wrote him as supposedly this, like, rake that he, you know, is, you know, just a rake and he doesn't do anything important. He doesn't have a job. And when Evie goes to him and was like, hey, I need to get married. I heard you need to get married because he tried to abduct her friend to force her to marry him and that did not work out because she was in love with his best friend. That was a previous book in the Wildflower series, but you see like glimpses of that. And like, he just is so sweet to Evie. Like you think because of this reputation that he has, that he's like this rake, he's this like mean person. He literally is like so nice to her and like loves her freckles, loves her stammer. Like he doesn't like make fun of her for it when you think he will because he's an asshole. Like he does say some mean things to like push her away. Sorry, I'm chewing gum at the same time. When I go on a walk, I have to chew gum or I clench my teeth, so anxiety, right? I just love the way he treated Evie in this book and how like he could not care less about anyone else in the world besides her. And like watching him fall in love with her again was so good. I love this book so much. <laughs> it's one of my favorite historicals. So this has definitely put me in the mood for historicals. I don't know which one I'm gonna pick up next after this, but I'm very happy to love historicals again, so. We'll see which one I pick up, but that's my really quick update on The Amazing Devil in Winter. If I didn't say it's a five-star read. It was a five-star read the first time I read it. It's a five-star read again. The audiobook is amazing. Mary Jane Wells does such an amazing job on the narration too. So good. Anyway, I think I'm gonna go edit a video for this week and maybe journal a bit. And I'll talk to you when I pick something else out. Hi, hello. I'm having an interesting reading week reading these historicals? I don't know. So I have a pretty big update for you. Not a big update. I mean, it is kind of big, but it's not like ginormous. So I started the Kate Baton book, Second Duke's The Charm, because it's her new release that just came out, I think on the 9th. And I was like, you know what? Let's give it a try. See how I like it. I got like two, three hours in and I DNF'd it. I was not feeling it. So how do I say this? I love Kate Bateman's writing, or I used to. I love The Princess and the Rogue. I love that book. It was such an enjoyable read for me when I read it, when I was very into historicals. Now she's taking this new series. I don't know what the series is called, but it reminds me of like the Grace Calloway where they're like three very powerful, like Charlie's Angels type thing. That's not my favorite to read in historicals. I love it when our female character is very strong and is like independent, but I don't like it when they're like, oh, I'm gonna make my own business and we're gonna sneak around and do all this stuff and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's like an investigative agency. I'm reading the blurb, that's what it was called. So I don't particularly like that kind of thing in historicals. That's just not my favorite where they have to like sneak around. I don't know, it's just not my thing. So I wasn't feeling it, so I deducted it. Now, I did start The Duke Gets Desperate by Diana Quincy because Christy enjoyed it and Jess was recently listening to the audiobook and she said it was amazing and she's really enjoying it. Now, it's a very much an enemies to lovers historical. I'm only 30% in, I only got 30% into it last night. Well, yesterday technically. And I am really enjoying it. I don't know where I'm gonna land with the rating because um, it depends on when the enemies turns to lovers, if that makes sense, and how it turns to lovers. I'm very particular about when I read any type of historical, well, when I read any type of enemies to lovers, it's like, how does the enemies turn to lovers and does it make sense? Do you know what I mean? So obviously our main male character, he is inheriting the, I think he's a Duke. Yeah, he's the Duke of Strickland. And Miko's barking. He's inheriting the Duke. So now that he's the Duke, he's trying to restore the castle to his, like, to where it what used to be. But when the father died, he left everything to the stepmother. And now the stepmother died, his stepmother died, and left it to his cousin, to her cousin. So she is an um, Arab American that comes from New York with, I think, her aunt, if I'm not mistaken. 
And so uh, he's like, why did she leave this castle to her? Like, I want, this is my family's castle. Like, I want it back. I want to restore it. And she's like, if you can come up with the money, you can buy it from me. Like, I'm more than happy to go back home to America where, you know, she can kind of do her own thing because her brother kind of kicked her out of her family's business. Because um, it's like, oh, it's not, you know, woman shouldn't be doing this, blah, blah, blah. I don't mind that kind of strong female character. Like, that's the perfect difference. I don't mind that type of independent historical female character. So I'm liking where it's going. I just don't know how it's going to turn to the lover's part right now. I'm like, they're still very much like, I mean, they obviously have a little bit of a chemistry, but he's just like, who is this woman and why? But I do like it that she's also trying to figure out how her stepmother died. I'm interested to see where this is going to go. So I'm going to continue listening to that while I work today. And then I was planning on reading only three for this reading vlog. My reading has slowed down a lot. So trying to read three historicals is a lot. But I think I'm going to get the audio for this book, which is Lorraine Heath's The Notorious Lord Knightley. So depending on when I finish, I don't like do two historicals at the same time. I just I don't like doing that. So I think if I can get the audio book, yeah, I'm going to download it right now. So I get the audiobook for this. I'll probably read along to it probably tomorrow night because it's Wednesday today, but I'm very excited. I've heard really good things about this one. Yeah, so as soon as I finish the Diana Quincy, I will give you an update and let you know how that is going. But so far, so good. So far, so good. I'm hoping that it stays pretty good. Um, I love that I reread Devil in Winter. That makes me very happy. So I'm going to go ahead and get working, continue listening to the audiobook, and I will update you when I finish that to let you know how I feel before I start this one because I'm very excited for this one. I'm going to put this on my TBR over there. Um, but yeah, I will talk to you later. Hi, hello. I have an update. Whoop, whoop. Um, I finished the Diana Quincy historical and I'm giving it three stars. Um, I wish I liked it more because Jess was like, everyone needs to stop what they're doing and go get this historical now I don't mind it when we have a duke that's like we need to marry right now I put you in a compromising position like we need to we need we need to fix this she is not British so she's not in the ton and for me I was like why are you forcing her to marry you when she's like technically an Arab American like she's not even from here <laughs> And so like, why are you trying to put like that kind of custom type thing on her? I don't know. I felt like it just like, it, it felt kind of a little unnatural for like the story and for her of how like independent that she was. And I felt like that was like the bridge for the enemies to lovers part was like they're forced together, they're forced to do this. I mean, like they had tension before. So like, it was fine. I actually haven't read that many Diana Quincy's previously. I've only read like one maybe I want to read more like her writing's not bad it's really good the narrators were good the story was just like losing me a little bit as, as I was um listening but I'm gonna sit down tonight I'm gonna go take a shower it's like seven o'clock I'll go take a shower and I'm gonna start the Lorraine Heath book on audio and I'm gonna physically like read along that's usually how I've been really enjoying books lately so I'm just gonna keep rolling with that just gonna keep rolling with that so yeah uh it's a very quick update so sorry about that but uh, I'm ready to relax for the night. It's been a long working day, but very productive. So I will talk to you guys later. Hi, I have an update for you because I got through just about 50% of this book, y'all. I'm listening to the audiobook. I started the audiobook last night and I was reading along, like physically reading along. I am so freaking obsessed with this book I am so happy I picked this one up like after the Diana after the Diana Quincy I was kind of nervous I was like oh my gosh I don't know like am I in the mood for historicals like that kind of was like scaring me that I gave it a three star I'm like am I gonna love this one am I gonna hate this one from the first chapter I was hooked on this book I curled my hair today a different way it's like very wild but I just I'm working I have to go to the gym today and all I want to do is sit down and read this book I just I just want to I just want to curl up with a blanket and sit down and read this book because so what these characters all of the men the chessmen which is this series this is the second book in the chessmen series you've seen them previously in one of her other series and they like are mentioned and I was like oh I, I think it's interesting that she's doing like chess pieces so like knight is knightly like he's um the earl of knightly i think that's what it's called um that's his like title so he's 
they just call him Knight. Um, there's King, there's Rook, there's, what was the first person? Oh, his was something, I forgot what it was, but they're all like chess pieces. So they all like get together at like this gaming betting club type thing. Well, this is a second chance romance, okay? If you know me, second chance romances are some of my favorite things in the entire world to read. It's just it's so angsty and so just like someone has to grovel in this book. He has to grovel so much. He has to like get back into her good graces and there's a part where I don't want to say the trope because I was actually, I was messaging Christy from Christy Reads a lot which is one of the people doing this collab with us with all of our booktuber all of these booktubers and she, I was like Christy I'm obsessed with this book because she was like I really hope you like it I'm like Christy I'm like three chapters and I love it and she's like oh my god there's a trope in here that I really hope you like and I got to it and I was like oh, I did not see that coming like seriously but basically what happens is they have like this whirlwind romance and when they're younger it's like five years previously so you get a, a couple flashbacks which I actually don't mind but it starts off with a passage from my secret diaries a memoir so there's this tome that was written and published no one knows who the author was because it's anonymous that it's like all of these scandalous things that happened to this young woman you know like at balls and stuff like that oh my gosh and you come to find out it's our female character who wrote that but she wants to keep her you know her name anonymous she doesn't want people to know that she wrote it and but she wrote someone called lord k now people think it's him because it's like our main male character because he like looks like them or looks like him like what he's described i mean it is him because she wrote it about him and he, she was the only person that he was with but she's back in town after five years like back into london because she traveled europe after their marriage was broken off he broke off their marriage like she was left at the altar by him and he won't tell her why and you find out why and i'm like i told christy i was like this better be a really good reason and she was just like just wait for it and i was like oh my god that made me so sad like Oh my god, there's there's so many layers to this book and I was like, why is this almost a 400 page historical? That's kind of like unheard of. It's 367 pages. That's pretty long for a historical romance nowadays. Like Avon usually doesn't publish that long. But I am so glad Lorraine Heath. I'm so glad she wrote this this long. Like I'm so, I'm so happy. I am absolutely loving this. I literally cannot wait to be done with everything the gym like I don't even want to go to the gym but I didn't go to the gym yesterday so I have to go today but anyway that was my very long update I'm pretty sure that made no sense I'm trying to keep it spoiler free but this I have I don't want to say this because like it could jinx it I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a five star read unless something like majorly goes wrong oh my god but it's so good like it just has me going like <gasps> Oh my god or oh my god that's so sweet or oh my god i can't believe that happened like i'm gasping at every turn and i'm loving it so it was i just edited a video so i'm gonna get back to work but i cannot i cannot wait to sit down and finish this book tonight and then tell you my update i literally cannot wait cannot wait so not me thinking that i closed out the vlog literally edited the whole thing and i was like um where's my outro i never gave you an update on the notorious lord nightly this book was so good sorry my face is so red i just did like a bunch of skincare but um this book was so freaking good like five stars i haven't read a historical in this long where i have just been utterly obsessed with the characters and the story and like needing to know what happened and it was so sweet and so good i there's something about lorraine he's writing i don't know what it is she's just one of my favorite historical romance authors and yeah Five stars, five stars all the, all the way, all the way, all the way. Um, but just drop the book. But anyway, that is all I have for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out everyone else's vlog. I'll have them linked in the description box below. But that's all I have for the emoji. Ooh, what kind of emoji? I'm trying to think of a historic emoji. Drop me a castle emoji. Yeah, drop me a castle emoji in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more content for me. As always, I hope you're living a novel life, and I will see you in my next one. Bye, guys.